What's up guys, my name is Justin with Into the Backcountry Guides and today we're going to talk about five pieces of gear that you don't need to bring backpacking. And now this is despite the fact that you might see a lot of people on the trail actually using these items. So this is again my personal opinion, um, So, um, but, my, um, but with my experience. So uh, the first item uh, that uh, you don't need to bring on your backpacking trip is boots. Um, this is kind of like an old school thing, feeling that you need these big rugged uh, boots uh, on the trail. The reality is these things just weigh you down. They're like lead bricks on your feet. Um, and so if you're going up a hill, you know, it's just going to tire you out that much quicker. In, instead, you can use something like trail runners. These are the Ultra Lone Peak uh, uh, 5, yeah, no, yeah, 4.5s I think they are. And uh, they're a lot lighter and can um, not tire you out as quickly. Uh, there was one study, I think it was by the military, they said, um, you know, it's like add an additional 15 pounds on your back if you wear um, heavy boots and stuff. So yeah, it's just not a practical thing in the modern world of hiking. And um, the one thing that you might be worried about is protecting the bottoms of your feet. Now, if you buy a premium uh, trail runner, they usually have a stone guard built into them. So, you know, stepping on roots, pointy rocks or whatever, you're still protecting your feet in that way. And some people might be worried about, you know, they might have wide feet or something and they fit better in a boot. Well, there are some brands out there that do have wide sizes in the trail runners. Um, another thing is with sh stream crossings. So you're wearing boots, you come to a stream. Well, you can't just wear your boots right uh, as you cross the stream. You have to usually take them off, go across barefoot, and you know with the algae on the, the rocks and everything, it makes it very slippy uh, doing it that way. And so that's the benefit of, again, having trail runners. You can just leave your shoes on. You have the tread to give you the proper traction on those slick rocks. And then afterwards, these shoes dry out really quick. And then you didn't even have to waste the time of taking them off when you're crossing and everything. So you have that benefit. And then also another thing is blisters. Uh, boots make your feet sweat a heck of a lot more than trail runners. So, you know, um, blisters are, are just a big problem and with trail runners, it kind of solves most of those issues. So that's our first item um, that you do not want to bring, boots. Uh, second item is bladders. You know, this is, uh, I see this all the time on the trail. And usually it's with beginner backpackers that don't have a lot of experience. So I don't have anything against bladders. If you want to go that route, that's fine. However, uh, as you get more experience, you're going to notice more drawbacks to them. Number one thing is when you drink from them, the water tends to taste like plastic. So that's a big drawback. Um, also, they're notoriously hard to clean after your trip. Um, so they do have products that can help you to clean them better. Uh, so you don't have mold growing in there and everything. But then, you know, that's just more stuff you need to buy. It's just a lot easier to go another route and that is uh, just using disposable water bottles these things are a lot lighter these tend to weigh I think like a pound and this weighs without the water you know just a couple ounces and stuff and then once you're done you just throw them away you don't have to worry about cleaning it or anything and then if you have like a Sawyer water filter it can literally attach to this and stuff and makes filtering your water super easy so another drawback with the um, uh, with the um, bladder is with this being tucked in your backpack you never know um, how much water you really have left so when you're going from water source to water source you're not sure 
if you can, if you need to fill up or not. So you have to pull off your backpack, uh, open it up and pull this out and see how much is left and stuff. So when you're using a water bottle, I mean, you can see right, right here how much water you have left and it's right in your side pocket and you can just pull it out, you can tell and then decide whether you're gonna uh, fill up or not. So um, there's just so much more um, benefit to having water bottles than a bladder. Uh, let's see, the third thing is cotton clothes. Um, you know, like bringing long underwear, you know, these, these, there's a saying in backpacking, cotton kills. And the reason why is, um, you know, in those cold nights in the mountains and stuff, if you've been sweating all day, all it does is just soak up in these um, fibers and then it can freeze you to the bone and stuff. These th the cotton does not dry out very quick. And then if it's warm out and stuff and you're soaking wet, whether um, it, it was raining or, or whatever, cotton doesn't breathe when it's wet. And so it's just making you even more overheated. Um, the better things to uh, bring is synthetic. Um, this is uh, body armor. Um, so um, nylon, spandex, um, anything, polyester, you know, all that other stuff. It dries super quick. It does that evaporative cooling, keeps you cool. And then in those cold nights, it'll dry quicker, your clothes, and then at, at night, um, it won't freeze you to the bone. So that's another thing you do not want to bring is cotton clothes. Oh, and then with your socks too, that's a big thing. We talked earlier about stream crossings, uh, crossings. And so with socks, if you had cotton socks, they wouldn't dry out quickly. It would encourage blisters um, and just be very uncomfortable to have these wet socks on all day long. So a better thing to uh, bring is uh, like the merino wool. A big popular uh, brand, a brand I use is the Merino Wool uh, Darn Tough Vermont Socks. And uh, they dry out considerably quicker. They breathe a lot better. Um, so it really helps against blisters ultimately too. So do not bring uh, cotton clothes of any sorts. Um, the other thing, and this is probably a little controversial, is that that you don't want to bring is rain covers. Uh, mm -hmm. I never really understood these things. You know, in the beginning, I uh, when I first started hiking, I used these and I got caught in a rainstorm, a heavy downpour, and my backpack still got wet, you know? It's because these things are good to cover, you know, the back part of your backpack, but, you know, water can still get in the front, especially when it rains hard. And so it's like, they're, they're like half helpful. Um, they're light, you know, they're easy to put on to a certain degree. However, um, I just don't understand. They don't function properly. Um, and then a stream crossing. If you fall in a stream, this thing is not gonna protect your gear at all. Um, a better thing to do is to bring a pack liner. These simple plastic things, they're surprisingly uh, durable. Uh, you can get them at Gossma Gear and a few other places. And they are lighter. And what you do is you line the internal, the inside of your backpack and put all your gear inside and then tie off the top. And so let's say you're you're going across a stream and you you fall in well it doesn't matter all your gear inside that pack liner is going to be a hundred percent protected compared to a, a rain cover and then the other added benefit is when you're using this rain cover if it does rain a lot and even if it's a heavy rain again your backpack is rainproof inside with all, with all your gear and you don't have to stop and pull out this rain cover or anything like that. It's already, everything's already sealed up 
and waterproof and stuff. So you have that added benefit of of not having to worry about it if a storm all of a sudden uh, comes up. And so yeah, there you go. I mean that's um, I think pretty self-explanatory. Um, I think a lot of beginners are just not fully aware that there are liners that exist that you can get. It's just a no-brainer to me to, to use a liner. Um, yeah, lastly, I would say do not bring our foam pads. You know, some of these, uh, you know, it's cheap. You know, these things only cost like 50 bucks, you know. But it's just not worth it. You know, your sleep outdoors uh, in your tent is important. And, you know, doing all this uh, rigorous activity and stuff, it's important that you get a good night's sleep. And so just to save money, uh, if that's the only reason, just avoid the pads altogether, um, the foam pads. But instead, you want to try to get something like, like this, uh, an inflatable pad. This is the Nemo Tensor. I've talked about it on other videos and stuff. It's just a lot better than um, a foam pad. Uh, you, I think it's about three inches thick, and you, it has a really good baffle system uh, that supports you. And if you want a little bit extra comfort, get a wider uh, width uh, sleeping, uh, sleeping pad uh, so you don't fall off of it and stuff. And your sleep will improve considerably if you get something like that. And so, yeah, again, do not get a foam sleeping pad. So there you go. You have five gear items that are popular on the trail, but I encourage you to not buy them. See you in the next video, guys. Take care.